settle in, the wacky Gun Talk After Show crew is gathered, and there's no telling what they'll say. All right, time for the After Show. Tom Gresham here. We got Michelle Cleveland over there. Hello. Hey, Michelle. Hi. Hey, we got Jim. What's face? It doesn't know, matter. We got the Michelle. Kid, the, the Kinsey dude. Yeah, we got. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, we're gonna have Michelle and the guy who's not Michelle. So right. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's here too. <laughs> oh yeah, he's over at the corner too. Hey, hey, guy who's not Michelle. Uh, yeah, so Tom's over there and Jim's on the mic and we're having fun and we got. Uh, why don't we do this? Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. For, wait, wait, wait. This story just broke. Stand by. Uh, Floridians will not get to vote on an assault weapons ban in 2020. They were trying to put it on the ballot, a referendum. They needed 766,000 signatures. They got 145,000. So they were more than 80% short of getting people awesome. to sign up for a uh, gun ban to put it on the ballot there. They'll come back in 2022, try to that. But Well, they're cockroaches. Uh, yeah, they just never go away. Hey, let's go grab uh, Mike on line four out of Oklahoma. Hey, Mike, I appreciate you uh, hanging in there with us. You're now on the after show. How are you, sir? I'm uh, doing great. Good deal. All right. So I see here, police officer, eh? Well, I was a state trooper for 35 years. Oh, man. Okay. In Oklahoma? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good deal. And, uh, but I, I guess what I just got to ask is, did you hear Will's call? Is that why you're calling? I I did. And um, I would say, well, this is a kind of a matter of geography here in Oklahoma. I would say as a whole, we're very pro-gun. Um, I, as as you pointed out, uh, I've been a uh, firearms instructor also for uh, 35 years, and uh, it's um, here in Oklahoma, uh, we don't have a problem. Law enforcement as a whole, we don't have a problem with law-abiding citizens carrying firearms. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we don't look at it the same way, I guess, as they do out on the West Coast or Left Coast, as they say. But uh, around here, we uh, I, I am with you on the as far as the open carry. I think it is a... I think it's a tactical, a non-tactical decision. I don't. Uh, I think you're better off concealed, and I don't have a problem with people being concealed. But tactically, um, if if I were to switch over to the bad side and I go into a, a big store or something like that, and I'm, I'm armed with a semi-auto weapon, you're going to be the first to go. Well, there's another, there, there's another thing here, and I think as an officer, you understand this so much so that you may not even think about it, and, but the rest of us may not, and that is when you're carrying in uniform, you have a serious retention holster on, right? Sure, sure, absolutely. And so, I mean, well, if, and, we and, been... and, 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 and before you get to the, I know you're going to go to weapon retention training as yes, well, yes. but also when you have a, a real retention holster, it's really hard for somebody to snatch that gun out of your holster. Now, if you would go ahead and explain weapon retention. Well, we spend uh, hours and hours and hours in academies and, re- and training and retraining on weapons retention. And uh, also on the highway patrol, we taught uh, and we practice ground fighting uh, and retention of the uh, weapon when we're fighting. So we've certainly got a, uh, a big advantage over the uh, average guy or gal out there that are carrying a weapon and have not uh, been schooled in weapons retention and uh, and in fighting with that weapon or fighting to keep the weapon. So uh, the, the open carry is... We have open carry here in Oklahoma. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, we now have constitutional carry here in Oklahoma. You just put it on carry it. Uh, but uh, the, the open carry part of it is, uh, like I say, and, and I'm with you. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But uh, I think uh, a good tactical decision is to have that thing concealed, be able to pull it out when you need it. Yeah, you don't want somebody just to be able to walk up behind you and snatch it out of your holster, which can happen. Or, as you say, and people don't understand. I always ask people, you know, all right, in this crowd, has anybody here ever been in a fight, like a fist fight kind of deal? You know, some hands will come up. And then you oh, say, yeah. in the process of that, did you ever end up on the ground? And pretty much all the hands stay up because once you get in a fight, you're probably uh-huh. going to end up on the ground. And then the whole deal is, now, have you ever rolled around on the ground with your carry gear on? Do that and then stand up and everything that's left on the ground, you're not going to have with you in a fight. That's and right. It's amazing how much junk you're carrying, holsters, guns, mag pouches, all the rest of it fall out if you didn't buy it or choose it carefully and if it, do, if it doesn't really hold on to your gear. But, I mean, and you know, if you're doing ground fighting, if you're in a fight, like a hands-on fight, there's an excellent chance you're going to end up on the ground, right? 
excellent chance you're going to wind up on the ground. And for many years, we didn't teach ground fighting. We taught uh, all some variations of the, the the martial arts, but we didn't teach ground fighting. And it's great stuff if you uh, if you choose to train in it. But uh, the problem is, most people, most officers, would panic when they get on the ground. Mm. They're they're at a they're at a great disadvantage. They get on the ground, they panic, yep. and that's when they lose. So. Uh, Something like the ground fighting is is good to train in. Uh, we say this here, I say as a firearms instructor, and I've taught many civilians uh, and law enforcement officers across the state, but uh, a good thing to do is give it the same type of training law enforcement is training in because you're carrying a, you're carrying a weapon just like law enforcement has mm-hmm. for many, many years. And uh, once the green light turns on, the deadly force light turns on, and you're able to use deadly force, uh, there's no difference between the law enforcement officer and the civilian uh, as far as uh, defending themselves. It's it's mm. a gunfight against one or more persons that are already predisposed to do you harm. You're just going to have to get yourself out of it. That's it. We don't. By the way, we don't have a vest and we don't have a radio. So right. you know, we, right. we got to take care of whatever it is and get ourselves out and our loved ones out as best we can. And that's where you better hope that you've had some training, not just oh, I bought a gun and a cool holster and aren't I sweet and cool? Right and pick it up and carry it. Uh, mental awareness is, is a big thing, and I do see people uh, that uh, the, their mental awareness is they're just completely bankrupt in mental awareness. Uh, <laughs> they go into a restaurant. They are armed. Uh, they walk in. They're on their cell phone. Um, mm-hmm. They're not even into looking around and seeing who's there and what's happening, and then they go get a seat where their back is to the entire restaurant. And uh, <laughs> if myself and a guy that works for me now uh he's i'm former marine he's former 82nd airborne we looked at this guy one time at a restaurant we said well we don't really need a gun we can take this guy's real easy <laughs> and uh, so yep. uh, that mental awareness and uh your your uh uh use of uh of tactics is very, very important. I wish I'd love to see more people uh, thinking about that, doing that. There's a lot of schools out there mm-hmm. uh, by former officers. Uh, I, I teach those, and uh, there's many, many officers across the country, former officers, and people that are teaching uh, this kind of uh, firearms training that is really good to take advantage it, it of. Used to, it used to be hard to find good training, honestly, and, and now there's really good training everywhere. It, it did. Uh, I started this. Uh, our concealed carry came into came into law in, in 96 and I started teaching the uh, concealed carry and it was uh, it was more or less a crash course in the uh, in the legal system it wasn't so much a shooting course right uh, the, the, sh- the shooting course was really a safety course you didn't even have to have a qualifying score mm. uh, you just had to show that you were safe on the firing range mm. and uh, that prompted me to go ahead and uh, start having some private schools and teaching uh, teaching gunfighting essentially. Yeah. And uh, weapons retention, weapons recovery, uh, close quarter battle, those kind of things that you're going to be required to do um, if you find yourself in a deadly force situation, law enforcement, civilian, or, or whoever is carrying that firearm. Because nobody's going to just let you win, and the bad guy isn't going to just let you win, and nobody's going to go a little easier on you because you don't have a badge. Uh, when you find yourself in that deadly force situation against one or more persons in the FBI, statistics show us that uh, the majority of our shootings are at close range at night, settling three shots or less, whether you win or the bad guy wins. That's seven yards and in. A lot of the shootings we had in law enforcement uh, just before I retired, they were, uh, they were struggles. Uh, one-on-one, whether mm-hmm. you're wrestling in a ditch or fighting with somebody, right. and you wind up shooting the bad guy, and it's a contact wound. But... Yeah. Uh, Nobody is going to just let you get away with it, whether you've got a badge on or not. So you need to train just as hard as the guys with the badge. There you go. Mike, thank you so much. Excellent call. Good information. I really appreciate it, sir. Look, and thank you for uh, helping the rest of us out. Well, thank you very much. Uh, love your show. I, I sit here at my... Uh, my shooting range on Sundays and I always listen to you. <laughs> it's a, listen to I'm, us I'm, shooting I'm the breeze. Shooting in between listening to you on the radio. Part of the qualification, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Turn up the speakers loud. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You take care. You know, guys, I was just thinking though, about what Mike was saying that uh, nobody's going to let you win. That's and perfect. It, that, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. I thought, I think it's kind of odd that a lot of law enforcement. Uh, people look down on the average citizen carrying a gun. There's been numerous cases where average citizens stepped in and saved a cop's life. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it's interesting. He said he said he thinks it's regional uh, and maybe yeah. geographical, and I think mm-hmm. he's probably right. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, I think probably the attitudes of some of the law enforcement officers reflect the attitudes of everybody else around. If you're in, for instance, New Jersey, where you know it's maybe a little unusual for people to carry guns for defense, that carries through to law enforcement versus Oklahoma, where you figure everybody does. Why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. It's a different attitude. So uh, that was interesting. Well, and, and especially because the sheriffs, you figure, are always on your side, you know, because they're elected by you. Yep. But, but po- standard police or state troopers, typically you're like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> so it's, it's awesome to hear. Right. Yeah, exactly. It is. Tell you what, let's take a break now and we'll come back. And we've got uh, Jim and Michelle and me. And between all of us, we might be able to come up with a cogent thought. No way. No. Is that a precedent? That would, it's Groundhog Day. We would have to do it again and again and again. <laughs> God forbid. It is, it is Groundhog Day, isn't it? Yes. It is Groundhog Day, isn't it? <laughs> Break. <laughs> When the U.S. military's elite units and law enforcement agencies across the globe demanded innovation and reliability, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. When world champion professional shooters demanded precision accuracy, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. So it's no surprise more and more civilian gun owners are refusing to settle for anything less. They're choosing Sig Sauer firearms, ammunition, electro optics, suppressors, air guns, and training. Sig Sauer. Never settle. Visit GunTalk.com slash win to enter GunTalk's current giveaway brought to you by Sig Sauer. Four grand prize winners will receive one of the following. The new Sig Sauer Cross Bolt Action Rifle, Sig's BDX Ballistic Data Exchange System, the P320 X5 Legion Pistol, or the Sig P320 X Full Romeo 1 Pro Pistol. Enter now through February 14th at GunTalk.com slash win. All right, back with you here. Uh, yeah, Michelle, I was actually thinking about you when uh, uh, Mike was talking about, you know, getting serious, getting training. Uh, he's teaching people. The idea that you have somebody with a law enforcement background, he comes in and he's teaching concealed carry classes, and it's like, okay, let me explain to you how this really goes down, not how you think it will or how you think it should. But in the now, movies. You know, that's just... Man, that is really worthwhile instruction when you can find somebody with that kind of background. Oh, yes, absolutely. There's always something to learn from situations like that. Yeah, when you're talking about, okay, you're going to be on the ground. All right. right. Uh, can you, you know, and I've been to a number of these classes where we get on the ground and we practice drawing from our holster while we're laying on the ground. And lay, lay on your side this way, lay on your side that way, lay on your back. Now we have to shoot the target, and if you're laying on your back and you're shooting a target, it would be really good not to pull your knees up too high because they can't get in the line of fire, and that's an owie. Oh. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, okay, things I hadn't thought of before. Oh, yeah. Uh, why would I want to do that? You can, let me tell you, you can hide behind a curb. You know, it's amazing what you can hide behind mm-hmm. if you need to. And flopping down on the ground and getting behind something like that is not a bad idea, not a bad way to go. For, I mean, even if you're not down there fighting, if you say, well, I'm just stuck out here in the middle, okay, have you got a curb you can get behind? And think, well, it's only four inches high. That's four inches that'll catch bullets. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but I don't know how to shoot from there. That's not my problem. That's your problem. You should have trained for that. Well, and, and think about it, too. If somebody was actually going to train this way, practice, a.k.a. practice, mm-hmm. you're going to choose a grassy spot to do it in. <laughs> you know, you yeah. might be in the mud, yeah. the snow, the gravel. Yeah. Who knows where you're going to be? Oh, yeah. That's so, right. you know, getting toughened up, it, it's what it amounts to. Yeah, that's a good point. How many people actually get down on the ground and roll around on the ground? Uh, uh, you know, whether it's a floor or gravel or grass or mud or water or whatever. Um, and that, you're thinking, well, I don't want to go do that. Well, but that's, you know... You need to be willing to just flop right down and get there. Well, you also need to know whether or not the equipment that you have is up to the task. Oh, you mean like work when it's dirty? <laughs> right. And wet? Right. Make sure your mags stay in place and, and yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Stay do, clean. Do the mag pouches you use, will they hold? Seriously, I mean, and I'm not making this up. We'll actually have people do somersaults or get down and roll around and do all these positions. Now get up. Are any of your mags on the ground? If they are, then you need better mag pouches. Right. I mean, this is, it's legit stuff. If, if you're going to be serious about training, those are all the things to consider. And, you know, and if you don't want to get up and down like that, you'll, you guys will get a kick out of this. Gunsight is now offering what they're calling the geezer class. <laughs> 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 it's a, if you don't want to be going up and down and flopping on the ground, we'll do all this so that we'll modify it a bit. Because, you know, would you get, if you had the artificial hips and artificial knees and all the rest of it, but you still want to do the rest of it, they'll accommodate that. So that, that's kind of interesting That's actually idea. pretty cool. Yeah. It really is. Give He's you there. a fighting power. Yeah. And they say, okay, given what you can do and what you cannot do, right. now let's take that and show you how best to use what you can do. Well, you think of how many people that's been afflicted upon. How many people have knee replacements oh, or, yeah. you know, some type of joint replacement. See, I guess right. I'm more, Elbow, hip, you know, anything. I mm -hmm. guess I'm a little more evil. I tend to think that those people are more of a, a vulnerable victim. I see from the from the crook side, like, right. hey, there's somebody who's right. walking with which, a cane. That's an easy mark there. Which oh, is yeah. why they need to take this class. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, it's like people in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people say, well, who would do that? Yes, the bad guys will come and flip the chair over and throw him on the ground. Yep. Yeah, not even think and, about and it. And do. Now, and they do. And they go, now what? Well, let me tell you, I got a, a few friends of mine who are in wheelchairs. You would not want to do that because, trust me, they will be coming up with a pistol. Right. Well, yeah. you know, and, and you, you and I are both not a big fan of the shoulder holster carry or anything like that. But sometimes life is compromises, and, and that's a perfect situation there. Absolutely. Because yep. you have, my buddy's got two of them. He carries one on his chest, but he's also got one under his chair. Mm. So he can get to the one out of the chair easier and safer. But right. if he's knocked out of his chair, he's he would be helpless without the, the right. chest break. And, and you're right. Well, you you make an accommodation to mm -hmm. whatever the situation is. And there again, that's part of his fighting mechanism. If he has to use his chair, mm -hmm. and, you know, as cover or anything else, he's got the ability to get mm -hmm. out and still fight. Yep. Yeah. Interesting stuff. All right. So, Jim, you yeah. had uh, something before we did the show. You said, I got something I want to talk about during the after show. Yeah, a, a couple things happened. Uh, yesterday we had a, um, a reunion concert in town, and it was for a, a band that was pretty big 20 years ago, and they've all gone their separate ways with families and moving around the country, et cetera. So they decided they're going to get back, come back to town and have a reunion gig, and a couple bands get together, and we'll rent a hall that holds 400 people and pack 500 into it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we had sound check and everything. We had about a half hour before the they opened the door, so they're sitting around talking. One thing led to another, and I got to look around, and 80% of the guys standing there were all carrying. And I know that because I've had conversations with each one of them. <laughs> but uh, it's a pr pretty well-armed event here. Um, but the uh, the one guy I didn't expect, because I didn't I didn't know, I've talked to him a couple times on Facebook and stuff, and, right. and I knew he was, uh, I thought he was gun neutral, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. He crushed me. <laughs> He's like, you guys got to come out to my car. I go, well, what's up? Because oh, you got to see this. I'm like, okay. I'm figuring, you know, he got, you know, a new grip or something, right? Right. We spent just shy of a half hour. He pulls out a Glock 20, a 19, a 17. He goes, look at that. I got a chest rig and I got this belt pack. <laughs> he had two first aid kits and road flares. And he's just gone. I can't say over the top because can you ever be too was, prepared, he, right? He was Tackleberry. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just beaming. He was just beaming, showing us. I had no idea. And, um, it was just cool to see somebody I haven't seen in a while who before was, we never even talked guns before, but over right. the years I've seen him just be what I thought was neutral. He's low key about it. He's low key until he gets around like-minded <laughs> and then he was just exuberant, you know, it was great. Um, but the big take I got on the whole thing was I watched, I like people watching, it's kind of like sport to me. Great. Yeah, a little, <laughs> little weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I, I people watch a lot because when you're doing when I was I was teching. I wasn't playing that night uh, last night. I was just okay. just teching. Right. So you know you've got time to look around, and I'm, I'm checking my surroundings all the time anyway. So I'm looking around, and as the night progressed, I saw people that you know came in all you know bright eyed and bushy tailed, and two hours later they're you know getting poured into the back seat of their car kind of thing. Ah, uh -huh. But all the people that I knew were carrying, and I'm sure there were several I didn't know, but everybody I knew was carrying were the responsible ones. Ah. It carried through. Like we talked about it before. Like you, know, you yeah. meet your kids that are in the shooting sports, they're more respectful. They're, yeah. it's a, same kind of thing. I think the gun responsibility thing carries into their life. It carried into their drinking. And I'm not saying that any of the, none of these guys drank because that 
is not truthful. They weren't idiots. Right. They, you know, no. may have had two drinks over a five hour period of time or whatever. Right. Right. And, I'm, but I mean, they were, they were, uh, they were responsible. They were alert. They knew their situation was going on. If there would have been an issue, we all knew each other. We had like our own little informal security, you know, meeting. It turned out to be, but it, it was cool to see. It wasn't cool to see all people getting hammered, and that was kind of depressing. But the pe- the people, <laughs> the people that I noticed in a room that had had it together were all the gun people. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's well, as you say, that taking responsibility for yourself, and which means don't incapacitate yourself. Mm-hmm. That's kind of part of the whole deal. And uh, you know, living in uh, our near town, New Orleans, in this case, where people come and give themselves permission to behave badly. It's like in Vegas, you know, let's go there and incapacitate ourselves completely to become victims. Right. And it's like, you know, okay, God, you might want to think this through. But right. anyway, I no, I, I really did appreciate uh, Will's call, though, because that was uh, the whole idea of, you know, law enforcement officers who support concealed carry, who support good people having guns. I think there's more and more of that all the way across the country, you know, even in places where it might have been unusual 20 years ago. I think we're getting a lot, a lot more of that these days. So we don't need to discuss me getting pulled over the other night, do we? Uh, okay. <laughs> what happened? It went great. I was speeding. I deserved the ticket. All right. And got pulled over, and it wasn't safe to pull over, so I continued to travel a little further and found a spot where it was, and I pulled over and right. rolled my window down. And by the time my figure, by the time the, the officer gets up to the car, my hands are going to be on the wheel. Gonna have my license, my permit. I'm gonna play by the rules. Right. Pulls up in, pull up. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm okay. He's running my plate. Whatever. He walked up on the passenger side for his own safety, so he wasn't out in the street. Right. I think of that. I'm not a cop. He walks up. He says, uh, "Good evening." <laughs> I jumped and I scared said, the heck out I, of you. I said, "You scared the living sh out of me." <laughs> and he laughed. I laughed. I said, you know, "I have to by law. I have to tell you my permit holder." Blah blah. He goes, oh, "That's great." Like, not like, "Oh yeah." It was yeah. just like, yeah, that's fine. Um, do you have a weapon with you? I said, I do. He says, where? And I told him where. And, and I followed the Tom Gresham method. How would you like to proceed? Yep. He says, well, as long as it stays right there, I don't have a problem at all. Cool. It was really cool. And then, yeah. and I I think that part of it helped get me out of the tea. He said, why are you going so fast? I'm on my way to a date, to be honest with you. And, you know, being being late just doesn't <laughs> is a good first impression. He said, oh, okay. Now, hang on a second. And he came back. It wasn't two minutes later. He came back. He goes, uh, just you know, take it easy. We're, he said, you were going into a faster zone. You just were you know, a little You're premature. Of it. Yeah. Uh, so he was cool. And it was, you know, and if I had to give him the ticket, I'd have been fine yeah, with it because yeah. I had it coming. Yeah, I've heard about that whole premature acceleration thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different topic. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think it's. it's, I'm out. it's <laughs> <laughs> you knew I had to do that. I know it. I know. I didn't expect anything less. <laughs> But I mean, the whole thing, and, and that was one of the topics we talked about last night before the show was the way to handle uh, getting pulled over. Ah, yeah. And he hadn't got pulled over in a while. And we we, we talked about different stuff. And the, I think the way you think, because so many people, you get pulled over. What'd you pull me over for? Damn it, I wasn't going that fast. <sighs> it's just like, yeah, right. you're in a position where you could use some diplomacy, even if you have to swallow a little bit of your pride. Well, shut you know, up. I, I like the attitude you have, which is, Hey, I was speeding. You know what? And if I get the ticket, I get the ticket because I earned it. Right. It's, uh, but you know what? It's not a life-changing event. It's just an inconvenience for a few minutes, and then it's a few dollars, and let's rock. You know, let's keep right. on going. But with the wrong attitude, it could be a life-ending event. Well, yeah. Or at the very least, you could end up going downtown. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. But, you know, tr- yeah. It's one of those deals that generally smarting off, not just to police officers, to anybody, mm-hmm. never helps you. In anything. It only escalates. Yeah. It's like, what, what do you see as the end game? Do you think officers are going to go, oh, oh, you're right. I was so wrong <laughs> oh, good, pulling you over. Yeah, good comeback. You can go. Yeah. Oh, man, you win this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a police officer friend of mine says, here's the deal. I'm always going to win. <laughs> he says, I don't care what it is. He says, I am going to win. Mm-hmm. It's just, that's what it is. <laughs> Here's the guy. It's just easiest going guy in the world. And he said, yeah, you know, I tell him, you know, I'm going to have to arrest you. You know, you put your hands out. And guys, I'm not going to do that. You know, he says, well, I'm only going to tell you three times. I'm going to tell you three times. He said, on the second one, he says, he's on the ground. He says, we're, <laughs> we're, not, we're not getting to three, dude. That ain't happening. <laughs> it's temporarily disarming, though, it's, isn't it's, it? Yeah, he's just yeah. down. We're handcuffed. We're done deal. Everybody's safe. And that's the other thing. At that point, everybody's safe. Mm-hmm. So 
try not to be the guy that forces the officer to do that because, as we say, he's not going to lose. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, if he has to call his buddies in, whatever it is. And, you or you could do lose, like, yeah. you could, Or you could do like Jim, just go, you got me, man. That was stupid. Holy cow. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, you, you may, maybe you get the ticket, maybe you don't. But if that's the worst that happens, it's not, you know, you can bitch about it to everybody when you get there. But right. Like, but I mean, the other option, you know, uh, I wasn't speeding. Dude, I got you. Really? I wouldn't have pulled you over otherwise. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. Oh, well, so anyway. All right. So I've been seeing a lot of reports about uh, various people buying these new guns and a lot of new stuff. The, uh, the Python still gets tons of attention. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they're having some teething pains, I think. Yeah, well. They, let me tell you, they had no idea. Had no idea how yeah. popular it was going to be. You don't think so? No, they. I mean, they knew this was going to be a big deal, but I really think they got flat-footed. They got caught flat-footed, just like, huh. holy smoke! What's the back order on them? Six months now? Uh, I haven't seen my first one. Who knows? Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, my name, like, like one of our callers, my name's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know some people are getting them. Uh, right. They're shipping. Yeah, they're but uh, I, I, I'm trying to remember where I heard the number. I don't know where. I heard twenty thousand have gone out so far. I don't know wow. if that's. I don't know if that's a real number or if it's like a dream that in a fever p- dream somewhere. I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, but that that would be a lot. That's a lot of revolver. Now for for Ruger that would not be a lot. You know, right. Right. for Colt that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really interesting. How that one just struck a chord with so many people. It's like, oh, yeah, such a classic gun. Yeah, well, they've been talking about it for years. Are they ever going to bring it? Oh, that's never coming back. Oh, I'd love to get one. Yeah, it Col- shocks me that they wouldn't, that they would underestimate the power of that pistol being back. Mm-hmm. 15, no, 20 years ago, Colt told me we'll never be able to bring that back. And I said, what do you mean? They said, all the tooling's gone. It was all destroyed. And it wasn't until they had new ownership who came in and said, forget that. We're not going to make it on the old stuff. We're going to make it even better than it was. And they started from scratch with their C&C stuff. And, and did. did. And did. And it's, it's very nice. And, yes, I'm sure, you know, what do I always say? Beware of low serial numbers. Right. You know, unless you're collecting. But, you know, I would be just as happy to pick one up six months after when sure. kind of some of the teething pains right. it's are, like, are yeah, gone. Talk to the guy that bought the first Tesla. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, right. I mean, yeah, no. So, but they're, they're very cool. I mean, it's, it's really nice. Uh, I'm trying to think what else the somebody was just asking me about. Oh, Canic. Do you guys have any of the Canic or Canic pistols, Michelle? No, uh uh-uh. uh. Um, I've not shot them, but some of the guys in our office have, and they they like them, and they're nice pistols. Really? Yeah, and then yeah. I think they're affordable too. I mean, they're, yeah, in they're very real. affordable. Mm-hmm. It's, but you know, God, we have so many affordable guns these right, days. Right. You think yes. about it. It's true. I mean, 10, 10, 15 years ago, you were looking at. Well, five hundred dollars then was more than it is now, uh, right. and five, six, seven hundred dollars. And now you can get a lot of good guns at that three between three and four hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And some at the what would you say? Any in the under three hundred dollars range? Uh, there's a few out there. I mean, yeah. like Sky. Uh, yeah, there's some Tauruses that are out there that are you know mm-hmm. in that price point. Oh, yeah, and there's there was even some Smiths that were on sale for two forty nine. I was going to say the Shield is right there at that three hundred. <laughs> well, is. depends on. Right, but I mean, ballpark. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah and if, and in the sky, you can get, pick your choice of colors. Yeah. They got all these crazy colors in those things. Well, they've so. got the reflex <laughs> mounted guns now, too. So, you yeah. know, they got all kinds of stuff. So, it, but the, ammo, the ammunition world's changing, too. How so? Oh, you haven't heard? No. What's going on? <laughs> you could get have it. You, have you, <laughs> right. Yeah, you can get it. Have you, the, it's kind of exciting. Federal is making something for the, Lever action guns. <laughs> yes. Specifically right. chambered one yes. in the 327. No. Called the Hammer Down. Yeah? Yes. Ooh. So what does it do? So it is a nickel plated brass that has a different geometrical bullet that's designed for feed in lever action guns. They have essentially partnered with Henry on this, but ah. obviously all of the or lever Hank. guns. Hank, as we call them. <laughs> Hank. <laughs> Hank but, repeating yeah. R. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 3030 and 4570 and 45 Colt 327. <laughs> so huh. pretty cool. Now, what would yeah, happen okay. if you use that in a revolver? It'll right. work. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a revolver. It doesn't have to feed. Right. Right, but I'm saying bullet wise, any weird performance issue? Oh, I, would, I highly doubt it. No, wow. it's a special bonded 
bullet, and it's yeah, just I'm, made I'm, for I'm, the the ability the feedability. to feedability. I get yeah. it. Yeah, I just wonder. Yeah, if I'm it, looking I mean, now. Yeah, three twenty seven federal, one hundred twenty seven grain bullet, bonded hollow point. They also got a forty five Colt, forty four rim mag, thirty thirty. 4570 and 357 magnum. So if you buy a bunch of that, you could use it in your lover as well as your carry piece. It's yeah, not that's out there. My... It's not out there yet. Yeah, I go say all of these it says currently unavailable. <laughs> that's just a new announcement. <laughs> AKA vaporware. But actually being federal, they will actually turn it out. They don't announce oh, yeah. stuff they're not going right. to crank out. And and I think they have gone through and changed a lot of their bullet design too. They you yes, know they got they those have. deep shocks and stuff, the hydro shock and, and right. they've got a lot of new ammunitions out there. They really do. Uh, it, ammo is such a competitive world. It mm-hmm. is I can't even imagine and the margins are so slim on ammo. It's it's why they of course ended up they do well with the premium ammo. At least they can, you know, have the prices a little bit higher. But boy, when it comes to just match or practice ammo. Oh, yeah. Holy cow, it's like they're making nothing. Right. So, but yeah, no, Federal is doing some really cool stuff. CCI, Federal, all of that, Spear, Spear Gold Dots. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep, all of those. A lot of good ammo out there. And then you've got these uh, boutique operations like uh, Buffalo Boar, and they're doing all kind of wicked stuff. What was the cartridge I just saw I had never even heard of? I've got to go look it up. Uh, I mean, it's unusual to say, okay, here's a cartridge that people talk about. I haven't even heard of this. It's a cut-down 500 Smith & Wesson cartridge. Hmm. Have you heard anything like that? Let me see if I can find it. I know it was on the Buffalo Boar website. But basically just a little bit shorter, a little bit less recoil kind of a deal. So it's, it, it's like the size of your thumb if you had a circular saw accident. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah if, you, if you took shop. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, there it is. The 500 JRH, a.k.a. the 500 Smith & Wesson Short. No, oh, no, I've not heard of it. I had not either. 500 JRH. Huh. How interesting. Let me see here. Due to a large number of requests over the years. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you can't you shoot two rounds of that, you're done. Oh, the big stuff. Yeah, this is uh, 350 feet per second slower than the 500 Smith & Wesson, but it's still a 50 caliber. So you get 900 and we'll call it 1,000 feet per second out of a five and a half inch barrel. Huh. So, you know, that way it's, let me, and I can just tell you, shooting a 500 Smith, it's just not fun. Right. It's, I don't care how big the gun is or that it's got a muzzle brake. You're usually good for three to five rounds. And you go, right. that was great. Thank you. Next. Where's that 22? Like, yeah, would <laughs> yeah. anyone else like to shoot some of this? And, you know, hmm. which I will joke about the the used 500 Smith & Wesson that is sold with a box that only has four rounds out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a heavy hitting day. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, yeah, that was uh, two was people Three shooting. guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, was it really like that? Yep, you yep. try it. <laughs> I may have told you guys when it first came out, uh, I was shooting one of those pistols at the Smith & Wesson plant, and it did not have the muzzle brake on it. Uh, it had gotten knocked off during testing or something. They said, well, you want to shoot this? Said, yeah, sure. We'll just go in the, <laughs> the tunnel and shoot it. And what was interesting was the muzzle brake, actually the gas doesn't go straight up. It goes at an angle to offset the torque. Right. When this massive bullet hits the rifling, and then the rifling starts spinning this big, heavy bullet, the actual, the gun spins the other direction, tries to torque. Twist, yeah. Yeah. And that's why they have that muzzle brake actually fighting that torque. In my lifetime, I have never shot anything where I could literally, no matter what I did, I could not hold on to the gun with two hands. Huh. Wow. And I'm, I'm gri- gripping this thing, and I know it's coming, and I'm holding on to it. And when it went off, it would twist the gun so my right, shoot right hand, my right hand would actually spin inside of my left hand and come out and go over my shoulder. Wow. It was the, I was like, okay. And same deal there. It's like, you know, three or four of those, I'm good. I'm done, baby. Do you make that in plus P? <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> shoot that 500 yeah. grain bullet. <laughs> I like that in a two inch barrel. Thank you very much. So, so, did you follow that up with shooting one that actually had a muzzle brake on it, or were you like, yes. I'm good? <laughs> it, no, I, I did later, and it was much, much nicer. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I kind of got to where, honestly, I like the 460 better. Mm-hmm. The 460 Smith & Wesson shoots flatter, hits hard, and you because it's really a 45 caliber. Say you shoot 454. You, yeah, you can shoot 454 Kasua or 45 Colt. Mm-hmm. And when you shoot Cowboy Action 45 Colt, it's like a 22 rimfire. <laughs> it's like, <"Tum." laughs> 
course, no, you are. It's a heavy gun. Five pound revolver. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. It's and that's it's, my ankle gun. It's a thing, yeah. <laughs> so I, I call it hop along. Make an ankle holster for a five hundred. Start calling some yes, holster it's makers. Yes, thigh mostly. <laughs> It's and an it just slips down to the ankle. <laughs> dude, dude walks a little bit funny, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, you're just being a rube. I am. I am actually being a, what did he, what did he call us? Uh, incredible or uh, cre cre oh, credulous. credulous yeah. bo boomer rubes. That's right. Credulous boomer rubes. This is the CNN guys who are, and, and do, doing the whole southern accent and laughing at how stupid Trump voters are. Now, got to remember. This, these are the same ones. I went back just for fun to the 2016, and I looked up presidential polls October 2016, where they said Donald Trump has a 9% chance of being elected. And I just, it is so hilarious. And they were doing the same deal about what a bunch of rubes and what a bunch of goofballs and the, the very idea that anybody could think he could possibly be elected. I'm thinking, yeah, this is great. You guys just keep doing this because I would like for them, for people to actually go watch that video of these CNN dweebs doing this and watch it every day and, and send it out to all your social media friends every day. You talk about getting out the vote, man. Oh, well, so we shall see, you know, there it is. So anyway, I got to go find a, got to find a scope to put on my rifle. I'm probably going to have to order a set of low rings for that number one, because I really like a uh, one inch tube as opposed to the 30 or 34 millimeter tubes. Mm -hmm. And so I can mount it as low as I can. So I just run over to shopruger.com and buy the low rings for the Ruger number ones. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's low rider. Never mind. What? Good creepy. Yes, I, I, I got it. It was that. <laughs> he just, he understood it wasn't. Funny. I understood it. It just, it just was bizarre. It was that brain of his. He needs to get back on the meds. <laughs> you know, it's, this whole drug-free thing is not working for you, man. Yeah. I'm just telling you. All right. You know, just, just not. Because so, that's snorting Drano, man. <laughs> I gave a, I picked a bad day to stop sniffing glue. <laughs> right. Classic line. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Great. Well, guys, uh, let's see. We shall, we're kind of starting the whole countdown to election at this point. Mm -hmm. And the question is going to be, we're watching rallies in Utah, New Mexico, and other states right now. I'm really going to be interested to see if the Virginia experiment ends up translating to other states. <sighs> Sure hope so. Mm -hmm. All we can hope is that uh, you know people take it seriously, get involved, and don't go, yeah, that's really something. You guys go ahead and do that. Well, yeah, I was going to say not sit and watch another state suffer, but uh, <laughs> right. be, be pro-issued here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you're in a state where you think this is a good state, <sighs> well, good. Don't keep sit it, tight. Keep it that make, way. Yeah. Make, it, make it better. Because if it's a good state, you have the opportunity to actually make advances. Instead of fighting a defensive battle, you go, okay, say, well, then what would we like to have? If you said, what laws would we like to have? What would we like to be able to do here we can't currently do? Start working on that, you know, and, and, and push the envelope a bit. Yep, instead of always backpedaling. Yep, exactly right. If you like to shoot, you got to vote. All right, so your homework assignment is to go look up the 500 JRH, 500 Smith & Wesson Short. Yeah, I'll have to borrow your pistol to try that in. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and your wrist brace. And your... I'm not sure. You know, this thing may be kind of close and ballistically to the 480 Ruger. Hmm. So, and another one a lot of people don't know about, but that's a good round, by the way, the 480 Ruger. Would a comparison be obviously more powerful still, but comparison be similar to the 44 Mag and a 44? Uh, a little bit more than that. And also, the deal about a 44 Mag. You got to always remember is it's really a 43 caliber, not a 44. It's a 429 diameter bullet, mm -hmm. and this is an actual 50 caliber. And the, that difference is huge in terms of uh, impact yeah. uh, when you got a much yeah, bigger I, 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 Yeah, I didn't mean the two rounds versus. I meant the difference between the 44 and a 40 ver mag oh, versus oh, a I 50 see. and a, a 500 and a. You mean oh, like shooting you. 44 sure. mag, 44 special, 500 Smith, 500 yeah, KSG? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah the, yes, you, and you could shoot a four 500. JRH. Oh, I said it wrong. <laughs> you, you could shoot that in a uh, 500 Smith & Wesson because it's just a shorter. All it is, they just shorten the case a little bit. Right. JRH. Okay. Yep. Johnny Rocker and the Hitmen. I'm sure that's exactly what it stands yeah, for. Yeah, sure. It's a junior heavy hitter. <laughs> JRH. <laughs> <laughs> 
That'd be Jared squared. Well, it's still junior heavy. <laughs> you know, if we have to struggle this hard, maybe the yeah, name's not that great. <laughs> you ever wonder why it's the after show? <laughs> yeah, really. Because we keep talking the after everyone is gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they should have left us minutes ago. <laughs> I think they probably did. Which is our cue. There's the door. We're out, guys. Happy Thanks Super so much. Bowl. All righty. Be good. See ya. Hey, thanks for checking out the after show. And don't forget to join the Gun Talk Truth Squad at GunTalk.com and grab Gun Dealio for your smartphone. It'll save you money on guns, ammo, and more.